I always uh, comment with the Centre Court Specialised Masters Festival just how far it takes us in terms of industries, in terms of the different options for study uh, as we go from supply chain to healthcare, general management. Uh, and we couldn't leave not just finance, but financial technology out of that mix. And where better to turn uh, than WPI, uh, the Worcester Polytechnic. Uh, and uh, it's a great pleasure to, to welcome uh, Kwame Dunbar. Kwame is an Associate Professor of Finance. His extensive teaching and research, take a look at uh, his bio, it's so broad and so deep, uh, and also works with uh, numerous Fortune 500 companies. Uh, and also with us, uh, one of the star students, just a couple of months away from graduating, Renee Soka, um, did her uh, undergrad in computer science and a fintech minor. Uh, now she's about to complete her master's in computer science, uh, did a great internship at JP Morgan Chase, but has already lined up a very exciting position with Fidelity Investments for the beginning of next year. Congratulations, Renee, we'll be talking a lot about that. But uh, Kwame, I'd, I'd love to start with WPI because you know it's been around since 1863, 18, a, a long time. <laughs> Um, beyond those towers, which I know is is one of the statements of the school. So tell us a little bit about the institution, its reputation, bringing learning and doing theory and practice. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Matt, and having Renee, of course, to talk about um, WPI and the program. WPI, you know, one of the things that attracted me to WPI, I'm just about a year in at WPI, and I was attracted because, um, you know, the, 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 the school look, takes technology and it takes practice and it, it brings, you know, unique elements together. So if you look at the mission of the school, for instance, it develops adaptive leaders who create sustainable solutions, um, thereby delivering global responsible impact. And then, of course, conducting transformative research at the intersection of business and technology. These are key for me, and especially with fintech, right? It's that transformative change that is taking place within the financial services industry today where um, finance has entered a new phase of development. You know, we have moved from that phase where accounting and economics were driving finance. So today, technology is playing an integral role. And WPI is known for these key pieces, these pillars, because here, you know, our students, as you'll learn in a moment from Renee, they're able to come in and pursue their passion and, you know, um, take technology, you know, in, in a STEM environment and learning while doing. So, you know, the theory is being taught, but they're also being taught how to apply it in a practical setting. So they walk away with real tangible hands-on skills. And that's what I believe sets WPI apart from others. And that's what was a big draw. Well, already Worcester, uh, what is it, the second biggest city in uh, in New England. Um, and, and in terms of, uh, you know, doing a degree in, in, in fintech, who is it suited for? I mean, you attract, you know, talented individuals from all over the world. Do they need a particular background? And, and what are the sort of careers that they're now going on to enjoy and explore? Yeah. So the a fintech degree is for that person who is entrepreneurial minded, someone who want, who is a change maker, who is looking to go out and being part of the revolutionary change that is taking place, whether it's in the creation of, of new payment systems, new loan tools, um, you know, participating in the drive for, you know, digital assets um, that is going to be underpinning the new financial system. And, you know, when we talk about digital assets, we're talking about, you know, central banks getting involved in looking to create um, their own digital version of a currency. So, you know, it, this FinTech program, is, it's for those type of individuals who want to be a part of that change, you know, who are passionate, um, you know, who may have a technical background in computer science, data science, business analytics, um, you know, somewhere in the STEM field that, you know, they want to transfer, having those skills, right, that can be transferred into finance and then um, allowing them to have that deep underpinning of finance so then move forward and make a difference. Now, the program, you mentioned STEM, of course, it's STEM designated, which also for our international viewers at Centre Court, uh, you know, will make a difference for H-1B visas and, and their next steps building their career. 
Uh, but Renee, turning to you uh, and the exciting career that you're uh, exploring, um, uh, we joked before we uh, we went live. Um, if anyone can explain blockchain to me in thirty seconds, I would I would love to understand. Now you've done computer science already with a fintech minor uh, at the school, so um, tell us a little bit about your thought process in terms of then the additional step doing your masters. You know what 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 was it that was so attractive to you, and then building these skill sets that, as Kwame had described, are going to be so relevant in the fintech of today and tomorrow. Yeah, so thank you so much for having me on. Such a warm welcome. Um, so I think a lot of people in my generation and sort of in my recent graduating years can agree that companies are increasingly looking for that relevant experience for entry level roles. So I would say what personally attracted me to a master's um, in computer science was that the WPI program really addresses what companies are looking for and provides those necessary skills, provides that foundation that really gives students a leg up in industry alongside allowing me to complete it on an accelerated track as part of WPI's combined BSMS program. And so in choosing my graduate degree program, I did consider an MBA. However, the ability to obtain a minor in financial technology in parallel with my CS degrees gave me like the immediate opportunity to build a foundation in business that then I can support and build on throughout my career and I'm definitely open to getting an MBA in the future. I think I would just want a bit of industry experience before pursuing one. Right. Well, we talk about industry experience, of course, all, already within the master's program, you had a three month uh, internship at JP Morgan Chase. Were you mindful that things that you'd learned in the program, you were already able to apply uh, in that corporate setting? Yeah, definitely. One of our CS core classes is CS 3733, which is software engineering. And it really provides that instrumental foundation of software engineering. It provides students with the knowledge of agile scrum methodology that is so critical to all the banking industries. Um, it's what you see on a day-to-day -day basis. And of course, throughout my classes, I learned all the necessary skills, Java, SQL, React, and we learned other languages as well. Um, but I found that those three core ones were what were most useful um, in my experience at J.P. Morgan. I, I learned French. It was very useful for what came next. <laughs> but, um, I can only imagine with some of the languages that you're describing. So, so tell us a little bit about the program, because you've done computer science. And I don't know if that was essential to then be able to take the next step with the master's program. Um, both on, on, on the way that it's structured, how you can then you know bring in your particular focus because I think you can personalize you know parts of the program um, and maybe some of the non-technical skills you know things that you've learned about yourself through the course of the program. Yeah so some of the things that I really appreciated from my experience was just the sheer amount of practical hands-on learning combined with what I found to be a very academically supportive environment that WPI fosters among its students. I would say the tangible skills that I'm walking away with are the knowledge and expertise of software engineering paradigms. And like I said, a variety of programming languages. Um, something that I've witnessed by being a teaching assistant for the computer science department is just how regularly WPI updates its curriculum to stay current with industry skills. And I think that's something so valuable and critical that maybe not a lot of people know and it's not necessarily publicized to everyone. Um, as far as intangible skills, I would say collaboration and leadership. Um, because of the project-based learning, you get the opportunity to work with a variety of different people with different perspectives and mindsets. And so it's really interesting to take all of those and put them together in a project. And I found that to be most helpful in industry as well, um, because you're working on teams in in projects. Yeah. Now, Renee uh, talks, Kwame, about you know ensuring that the curriculum stays so relevant. And that's certainly reflected uh, in your background, your teaching, your research, you know, these touch points that you have with Fortune 500 companies, how do you stay on top of data security and crypto and blockchain and, and you know, things that are moving so fast? So, you know, and that's a great question. So what we do, we, we keep in touch with industry. You know, there are partners. And, you know, as we look to um, improve our program and look to make our program relevant, we talk constantly with our industry partners. So for instance, last week, there was a major two-day conference here at WPI where we brought in academics. We had you know, a number of um, industry players from a wide cross-section of businesses. Where, you know, from, it ranged startups into 
you know, standalone major companies. And the conversation was around the future of fintech. Where do we go? You know, and you know, what are gonna be gonna be where what are gonna be some of the growth areas in fintech in the in the, the years and months ahead? And also what are um our partners looking for in terms of talent and what should what kind of skills these talents should um, possess? So it's these ongoing conversations with our industry partners that allows us to stay relevant and also allow us to plan for the years ahead and also to provide, you know, what um, our graduates such as Renee will need moving forward. Right. So, so this you know, theory and practice that we were describing earlier, um, but Renee was also talking about, you know, the ability to work in teams and, of course, her own interview skills. She's nailed the job for Fidelity for the start of uh, next year. How do you then also support alongside uh, the very technical curriculum, uh, your skills that will serve them well, both as they come out of the program, but that are equally going to serve them well as they're building the next steps of their career. Yeah. So for 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 students, you know, the 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 team environment within which they work, and they 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 um, anticipated or expected collab collaborative nature of it requires them to, you know, to exercise a certain level of dynamic that, you know, as a in, in this kind of an environment. So for instance, uh, you know, what Renee spoke about in um, you know, their MQPs, we say their major qualifying project, which is a major piece of their um their, their studies, you know, we bring together diverse groups of individuals, you know, individuals who are skilled in computer science, you know, there's the FinTech group, you know, they, they you know, it, 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 you know, it runs the gamut in terms of the skills that are brought in, and then it allows students to collaborate, you know, um, being subject matter experts in in different areas as they tackle a real world challenge and problem, right? And for those, you know, several months that they're working together on this the deliveries for the client and interacting with the client, they're building and um, getting those soft skills also that they need that will also help them. Uh, Renee, I'm, I'm sure that after you uh, completed undergrad, you know, you could have gone into uh, next steps in, in your career, but you know, the, the, the determination with the master's, as you think about yourself on day one of the master's program, uh, the internship at JP Morgan, capstone projects, everything that you've learned, and now here you are coming to the end. C can you really see a difference between Renee starting the program and the Renee that we have us at the festival today? Definitely. I would say my confidence in group projects and sort of taking the lead on projects has skyrocketed throughout my experience. I would say coming into freshman year undergraduate, I was sort of that shy, more mellow person, but now I'm really taking strides forward. And I can't say that I would have seen myself here today, but without the great support and um, enthusiasm of the WPI faculty. They've really led me to this and supported me throughout my career and really, really thankful for all that. Yeah. Now, technology and, and financial services typically <laughs> have been male-dominated industries. And you talk about the confidence. So whether it's in interviewing, uh, you know, working in teams, taking the lead, um, do, do you think that, you know, other um, viewers, you know, young, talented women like you that are watching this, from your experience, would you say, you know, go for it, this will give you the sort of confidence and then open the doors and create opportunities? Yeah, I would say for any of the viewers, talent recognizes talent. It doesn't matter what background you come from. It doesn't matter your experiences, what you look like. Um, if you're in an interview, they will recognize your skills, your intelligence and your talent. So just have trust and faith in yourself. Be confident, obviously prepare for any interviews, um, but trust that who you are is enough. And yeah, that's what I would say to them. The school Kwame has uh, this sort of industrial heritage back in the 1860s and close ties to uh, industries. I think it was uh, mills and a, a, a tin manufacturer you know, back in the day. Now it's JP Morgan and it's Fidelity and others. Do, do you get feedback from employers about Renee, her classmates, and say, you know, the, the, here are the things that we really love about WPI students. Yes, we do. We do get um, constant feedback. And, you know, again, as I said, you know, our conference that we had recently that talks about the future of FinTech, you know, these are some of the venues that we're hearing this. But, you know, we keep, you know, um, that 
close connection with industry because the relationships are important to us. You know, we want to know how well our business, uh, you know, how well our students are doing in terms of delivering what businesses are looking for. And, you know, the, 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 the things that we're hearing has been pretty positive, you know, for the most part in terms of your technical skills, your prowess, their, you know, their um, motivation to take on challenging um, projects or, or problems and trying to come up with a um, reasonable solution. So, you know, yes, you know, we're getting feedback and yes, we're really acting on, on these as we learn, um, you know, what we could do differently, you know, for our industry partners as we prepare our students. As, as you um, welcome the incoming class, Kwame, um, you know, that they they bring their uh, eagerness, their, their motivation, but maybe, you know, a little bit of um, anxiety about being surrounded by so many other smart people. Um, how do you then sort of encourage them to really get the most out of the program, both in terms of the courses, but also growing in a personal development and, and also enjoying the WPI community? Yes. Yeah, so for most of us, you know, myself included, you know, we maintain an open door policy for our students and, you know, we encourage them to, to come in and talk to us. For instance, in my research, I open my lab to my students. They're able to participate in understanding the blockchain platforms. You know, what's happening with the various blockchain platforms, you know, which is more adaptive to what, or we talk about cryptocurrencies, you know, and um, what elements of cryptocurrencies may be um, attractive, right, that we could use in developing new products um, of the future. So, you know, my students coming in, they feel comfortable, you know, working around myself and colleagues and, you know, that lowers the, the, the tension between, you know, our students and seeing us as faculty and allow them to feel as if, you know, they're partnering with us, you know, in our work. So from there to the classroom, you know, we're able now to sit and talk theory and talk about, you know, what is important, right, as we look to develop new products. And then because of their work with us in our labs, having that practical hands-on experience, you know, that is translated into their work that they're doing. Now, in their um, project-based learning experiences, they're working with very same faculty like ourselves, right? We're the ones who are guiding them, um, mentoring them, and, and, and being the go-between with industry partners, right? Ensuring the quality of what is being delivered. So, you know, there, there's that constant mentoring and nurturing all along, um, from you know their early years here on campus until they get to that point of where Renee is today, where you know we can look at Renee as a final product of our um, you know our process and our education and see you know what she has done for herself. Yeah. Well, financial mathematics, Renee, uh, fintech analytics, uh, fintech development. You know, there's the course. But just being part of WPI, is, is there time to have fun? And is there time to also enjoy, you know, being part of this wonderful community? Yes, absolutely. There's a lot of, um, per se, free time um, for students to explore their other hobbies and other interests. But I would say even beyond that, just engaging in the curriculum is presented in such a way that that part is fun, too. Um, like Professor Dunbar said, the doors are always open. There's not a single professor who doesn't want to help you succeed. Um, their doors are always open. That's a policy that I found true for me as well. Um, and the doors are open for anything. It's not just related to their coursework. It's if you want guidance, help, um, mentorship with any side projects. I would say definitely overall the experience has been wonderful for that. And I hope that everyone else at WPI has found that to be the same way for them as well. Now, you made a, an investment in yourself, which I really admire, uh, an investment in your time and, of course, you know, financing uh, your studies. So as, as you think about, um, you know, a, a master's and perhaps advice for all of our viewers, um, you know, what, what would that advice be of someone considering a specialized master's and investing in themselves? Yeah, so I'll pass it on later to Professor Dunbar for the specifics about the financial technology masters. But to speak a bit more about WPI holistically, for anyone considering WPI for either an undergraduate or graduate degree, I would say the biggest piece of advice that I could offer to you is to get comfortable with the idea of collaborating with others for everything. 
While there are naturally courses and assignments that are more targeted towards individual completion, one of the unique core elements that we've touched upon of the WPI curriculum is that project-based learning. And so I think it's a really great choice for anyone who welcomes that challenge of solving structured and real-world, unstructured, sorry, and real-world problems in team environments. Um, yeah, so I'll pass it on to Professor Dunbar now. Well, and, and, and with that answer, Kwame, yep. uh, there's one element that I really enjoyed, the commitment that the school makes to make graduate studies more affordable. And one of the great consequences, of course, is the stronger ROI that it also then generates. So with that in mind, you know, attending WPI in, in particular, what would your advice be to any of our viewers as they think about their next steps? Okay, um, I didn't realize that was for me, but yes. Um, so ROI is important for us, right? And we think about, um, you know, the cost of education, and we also think about, you know, how the student will recoup that cost of educate their education. So, you know, in, in, in designing any program here at WP, a lot of thought is placed into what is essential, what is necessary. And, um, you know, and, and we try to ensure that, you know, as the program is constructed and developed, we are giving students exactly what they need to succeed. And if we believe that we shouldn't be in a certain space, delivering a certain, you know, program, we will not put it on just for the sake of offering the program. So we try to ensure that yes, it's something that industry needs. It's it's a, it's a program that our industry partners are willing and ready to hire into. And of course, um, you know, these are high paying, um, you know, satisfying um, opportunities. Before, you know, once it meets those criteria, yes, we will then pursue it and try to ensure that we can package it um, for our students. How can our viewers then, you know, that they're, perhaps that had their own thoughts around fintech and how it might fit into their future. So how can they reach out to, to, to yourself, to, to colleagues at the school, um, students and alumni like Rene? What, what are sort of the touch points to then be able to find out more about the institution, more about the program, and really make an informed decision for themselves? So I'm directing the fintech programs here at WPI. I'm happy, uh, you know, I, I said earlier, I have an open door policy, so I'm reachable via email. You know, my information is on the web site. Um, you know, carer services or or um, admissions are available, you know, readily available to talk more about our programs also. Um, you know, we run webinars um, periodically in which, you know, I meet with prospective students to talk about FinTech, talk about the industry, um, you know, the, the major changes that is taking place in finance today. And then, of course, talking about, you know, where our students are going, um, you know, earning potential, um, you know, some of the partners that we have that, you know, we're working with or looking to hire. So, you know, these webinars, we try to make them as informative um, as possible, they're not all the same because we adjust them based on, you know, the most recent information that is available to us. So again, you know, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm easily accessible and I'm more than happy to talk to, to, to your viewership um, more about um, what our program need, could mean for them. Right. And perhaps just one final thought, uh, Kwame, as you think about fintech, uh, where it's heading. Uh, and it's not just the East Coast. It, it's not just the West Coast. You know, this is a, a global phenomenon as, as you, your graduates, you know, are, are helping to shape the future of, of finance. So, you know, what, how do you look at it from a, a, a global perspective of how graduates will then be able to pursue careers locally in the US or then apply all of that experience and knowledge in international markets? FinTech is seen as one of those tools that, you know, FinTech products or FinTech companies. If we take, for instance, banking as, as an example, um, here in the US, um, which is, you know, a developed nation, the number of unbanked individuals were in the region of about 5 million people. 
um, when it comes and unbanked meaning have having no banking access. Underbanked, that number is almost twice what I, I, I just mentioned. Now that's here in the US. Now in areas in Africa, in Latin America, the problem is even much more severe. So fintech companies are developing um, platforms that can help with banking, making bank banking more accessible by using apps that run on your typical smartphones. And there are a number of um, these companies that have been successful um, globally. And these are the institutions that are looking for talent today. They're searching for that new talent that can make the new products that they're looking for. Generative AI has popped on the, the scene over the last um, couple of months, um, particularly because of ChatGPT, but using generative AI to, to, to aid um, employees, right, as they come up to speed with a lot of work, you know, things that they do, or back back office type um, work that they do, is one of is one of the big areas that is growing by leaps and bounds. And again, um, firms, whether they're here in the U.S. or globally, they're looking for that kind of talent that can work in that space to help to develop these AI type tools. So. You know, as we as I've I've been saying to our students and saying to prospects, you know, it's the market is growing. It's it it's it's and and you can see it in terms of universities getting on board offering programs. You know, it, it has been growing exponentially um, over the last two years or so. So it's it's a great time to get in 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 into the fintech space. And whether it's here in the U.S. or it's in Latin America or it's in the Africa, Asia, you know, Pacific region, it's there's a lot of opportunities here today for this talent that's coming out of the school books. Well, uh, Renee, on, on that note, um, we look forward to following your next steps, the opportunities that you'll explore. Fidelity is lucky to have you. And at Centre Court, we were lucky to have both of you to share that experience, that that enthusiasm and insight. Um, so Renee and, and Kwame, thank you very much for being with us.